reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who did not know sin, 
so that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take up his cross and follow me. 
So when we bless ourselves with the sign of the cross, you connect the sign of the cross with the confession of faith of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And in this way, the sign of the cross becomes a remembrance of baptism, which is particularly clear when we bless ourselves with holy water as we pass through the doors of the church. The sign of the cross, together with the invocation of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, sums up all of Catholicism. It displays what is distinctly Catholic. But on Ash Wednesday, when you are blessed with the sign of the cross made of ashes, you enter into a rather deliberate examination of conscience. What happens after you leave the church with those ashes on your forehead? Well, the first thing that happens is that you go out into the world where others are going to see this cross on your forehead, and although reactions may vary, you would want to make sure that your lifestyle reflects the distinctly Catholic silent witness your ashes are giving. So is your silent witness authentic or, in light of this afternoon's gospel, hypocritical? The other thing that will happen is you will eventually go home and wash off those dirty ashes from your forehead once again with water, and doesn't that water become a concrete, tactile reminder of your Catholic baptism? When promises were made and renewed and confirmation that you would practice your faith, you would keep God's commandments, you would love God and neighbor, and you would reject Satan and all of his works and all of his empty promises. So again, the question arises. Is your silent witness authentic or, in light of this afternoon's gospel, hypocritical? If you feel it's authentic, well, then you're off to a great start this Lent. But if you feel it is hypocritical, you're also off to a good start, as this Lent can be a timely one to move from hypocrisy to authenticity. So right after this Mass, Father Roy and I will be hearing confessions, quick and easy confessions. It will be simple, it will be simple, but it will be a confession. Father Roy is going to stand in that corner, and I'm going to stand in this corner. No formula, no bless me, Father, for I have sinned. So if you're from the old school and you come up and say, Father, I have to do the formula, I say, well, today's not the day to have your confession heard. You get two words. Two words for how long it's been. Six months, three weeks, ten years. Ten years ago is one word too many. Two words for how long it's been. Then you get one word for every sin. Lying, cheating, adultery, impurity, impatience. One word for every sin. Now, there was one man this morning after the 9 o'clock mass that thought it was just one word, period. So his word was four. I said, four what? He said, four sins. I said, I got one word for each sin. I need to know what the four sins are. One word for each sin. You're all going to get the same penance, and that's five Hail Marys. Six Hail Marys be one too many. Okay, so you all get five Hail Marys. We're going to say the act of contrition together right now. If you don't know the act of contrition, listen to the act of contrition as everybody else is saying it, and at the end of it, we just say, me too, Lord. <laughs> together. Oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended thee. And I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell. But most of all, because they have been me, my God, who are all good and most deserving of all my love. I firmly intend, with the help of thy grace, to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. And then you will receive absolution. Christ forgiving you through the words of the priest, Father Roy, and I. We will do all the talking. Quick and easy confessions. Authentic or once hypocritical. This Lent, you will be making a great start.